Hello and welcome to this London Embroidery School Stitch Along. Today I am going to be working on our newest kit which is our Surreal Eye Patch Kit and it looks a little bit like so. I'm your host for today, Natasha, and so let's crack into this kit together so you can have a little look at what's inside. So if you slip it out of its cover, we have our patch itself, which when it's blank looks a little bit like so. Um, as you can see, nice edge on it. So this is perfect for when you've done your embroidery, you can apply it to, I would suggest accessories are kind of the best outcome in my opinion, but you can apply it to whatever you like. So, you know, it could go on to bags or jackets or um, you could pop it into a clear phone case. Lots of ideas of things that you could do with that. We've also got our blue stranded embroidery thread, our yellow sewing thread. We have our passing thread. So this is a gold work material and you can see it's got this wonderful luster to it. We have our needle. We have a black base fabric on which to mount our embroidery patch. And then you will have your instructions postcards. So you've got one here for how to couch the passing down. And I'll go through that in a second. And then you've got your other one here, which is for a plunging end. So all super cute. So if we take our fabric to start with let's pop that out of the way so i'm just going to frame this up into my embroidery frame i'm working on a table clamp frame today so that i can stitch with both hands and i would strongly suggest that if you're working on a patch like this that you do that too as it will really help to have both hands available now, if you don't like to sit at a table when you're embroidering, you could also do it with a seat frame or a slate frame. Now, a slate frame is are the big sort of flat um, frames that you might have seen um, if you've watched any kind of like couture embroidery videos, anything like that. Um, that's the ones they tend to have. The round frames that come with like a stalk, so that you've seen probably here, whoop, like that so that they fit into either the seat or the barrel table clamp frame uh, base and allows you to kind of mount up a frame a little bit like I'm doing so here. So that might be a good option for you if you've never tried one before, but you'd like to give it a go. They're quite, um, you know, reasonably priced and all that sort of thing so that you can just sort of try out whether it's for you or not. If you are looking to push your embroidery forward, being able to stitch with both hands is definitely one of those skills that really will help to bring your embroidery up a level. And so I would strongly suggest looking into that if you're looking to take your embroidery that little bit more seriously. So I'm just going to grab a pin to pin the patch into place. So in addition to the kit, as I mentioned, you're going to need an embroidery hoop and some pins, as you can see. You might also like to have a laying tool to hand. So something like a stiletto or a malore, um, which looks a little bit like so. So this is a stiletto. That's usually my laying tool of choice. Um, just to help you to place some of the more tricky stitches. And... I also like to stitch with a thimble, so I am going to be popping my thimble on. Finally, you're also going to need a pair of snips. Just so that we can cut all of the threads we're going to be working with. So first up, I'm just tacking the patch into place. You'll notice that I'm going into this white area around the outside of the eye shape. And that's just going to um, allow us to join the patch to the base fabric so that we've got a nice smooth base against which to work. But also we're able to very easily remove these tacking stitches afterwards. You'll notice my stitches are quite big. They're there literally just to meld the two together whilst we embroider it. 
And the base fabric is important when you are couching gold work materials like the passing thread because it provides a layer of additional support to the area you are embroidering. So particularly if you choose to end your passing with the plunging method, if you don't know what that is, I am going to go into more detail in about that in a second, so don't worry. But um, it's just there to, yeah, hold everything nicely tensioned for you, but also provide that extra support. And when we plunge uh, gold work materials, that is quite a high stress um, technique. It's quite a high stress area that we cause because we're basically forcing a very thick thread through to the back of our fabric. Um, and we, you know, have to make a reasonably large hole in order to do that. Um, and so you need to make sure that your base fabric is supportive enough to be able to withstand the sort of pressure you would be putting your embroidery under in order to achieve it. Now I finished my tacking. I did that just with a single thread um, the whole way round. It had a knot in it to start and stab stitches to finish. You can start and finish however you like. Uh, that's not really too important. It just needs to all hold nice and tight in place. And we make sure we get some nice tension on this base fabric. It's wonderful to see so many of you joining me today. I hope that this new kit is catching your attention. It certainly has been pleasing me to see it and see how it's been selling over the last uh, sort of week and a half it's been out now. And if you are familiar with us and were sort of uh, also following us at the end of last year, then you will have probably noticed that this is sort of an extension of some kits that we did for Christmas last year which were the snowflake decoration kit and the mini star decoration kit. And they were super popular with you guys, which was just wonderful to see. So thank you very much um, on that front if you are one of the people that purchased one of those. And um, yeah, we wanted to try and bring you something similar this year. But that wasn't quite so Christmassy feeling. We don't want it to just be limited to the festive season. So this surreal eye patch kit is the first of what we're calling the um, art collection. Each patch will kind of be based around something that pretty well represents um, an art movement from history so this one being the surrealism one um with the eye it just made us think about that but we've got one coming for um the renaissance we've got one coming that's kind of art nouveau feeling um yeah there's it, they're going to be really cute and so it is going to be part of a collection if you are a art history buff or um are just interested in beautiful things then I think that this really could be for you. So I'm just starting off with the stranded embroidery cotton and very simply doing a straight stitch around the iris lines. Each one is just looking to follow and cover over the black detail on the patch itself. But equally, by starting in the centre of the patch, that's, um, you know, really quite helpful for tension purposes. Again, to really meld the patch to the fabric underneath, get them really working together. Perhaps if you haven't embroidered or sewn in a while, this is quite a good entry to that because I feel like this is the warm-up you know they're just very simply straight stitches up straight through the fabric needle perpendicular to the plane of the fabric and then straight back down at the end of the line think about controlling your thread as it goes through the fabric particularly if you're working on 
um, a frame of some kind rather than just an embroidery hoop because you've got both hands you can really control that thread coming through the fabric and you'll find as you explore more into different embroidery techniques controlling that tension is actually really important for making sure your thread doesn't twist and for the smoothness of the finish you'll be able to create by controlling that tension. It's one of those factors for consistency that professional embroiderers really hone. And so it's definitely one of our little tips and tricks from in the studio. If you are interested in more things like tips and tricks from professional embroiderers in an embroidery studio, we have a whole playlist about just that um, on our YouTube channel, also called London Embroidery School, that you might find that you enjoy. So there is a playlist called Pro Tips, which, as the name suggests, has loads of pro tips from us of things that we do that either make things quicker or more consistent or just make your life a little bit easier when you're embroidering and so particularly if you're a hobbyist there are things that you might not um you know have known simply because they're usually passed down from master to apprentice as is the kind of traditional way for crafts like embroidery to be carried on but we think that you should also be able to have access to that sort of information because it's the sort of info that will just level up your embroidery that little bit more you know if it manages to take five percent off an element of your hobby that is mildly annoying um then i think you know if it increases your enjoyment then it's absolutely worth it for that extra five percent because we get so little time to explore our hobbies with our busy lives as they are, that we should, you know, try and take away as many of the barriers that might end up being in our way to getting started or just to really enjoying the process. And all of the techniques in this particular kit are very good for just enjoying the process. They're reasonably repetitive, but I'm sure you'll agree if you have an interest in embroidery that kind of partially the repetitive nature of the stitching is sort of part of its charm. It allows you to really sink into it, to enjoy the movement, the repetitive movement of that, and, you know, tap into a different part of your brain. It's that doing, but also relaxing, but at the end, hopefully quite satisfying. Yeah, it's that, that wonderful mix of all of those things together. Well, that's what it is for me, at least. Let me know how you feel about it. If you've got any particular strong feelings about embroidery, what it makes you think or feel when you're doing it. Let me know in the comments box below. I always love to chat to you guys whilst I'm doing these stitch alongs. Otherwise, it very much is just me in a room chatting away to you. Um, and I like to hear from you guys and see what you're thinking. And yeah, just kind of take the temperature of the community. Speaking of our community, we do also have a mailing list and a Facebook group that if you're enjoying this, you might like to look into a little bit further because there is always extra content, early access to new products, um, special information, all of that stuff happens on those two methods. So that's the newsletter, which you can sign up for at the bottom of our homepage on the London Embroidery School website. And the Facebook group is called London Embroidery School Club. And you can just search for that on Facebook. And uh, yeah, put in a little request and we will have you join us there too. That's a little bit more interactive because obviously on the Facebook group, you can chat to other people from the community as with the mail out is obviously just us talking to you guys 
Um, but yeah, depends which you prefer. I also have myself a nice cup of tea whilst I'm here. Because I know what I'm like when I do these stitch alongs. I just chat away and I find my voice gets more and more gravelly. And I'm sure that's not what you came for. <laughs> so um, I will try and keep it smooth, like my stitching, with the aid of tea. Okay, so we've got a couple of comments here. I'm just going to have a quick look at, which does force me to pause my embroidery a little bit. But um, as I say, if I do miss any of your comments because I'm stitching, it's not because I'm ignoring you. Um, I am obviously just looking at my stitching. I will try and look back through the messages periodically to try and catch everybody. But if there is a particular question you want to ask me um, and I don't quite get to it, do feel free to direct message us afterwards. It will still be me looking at those direct messages after this stitch along. So, um, yeah, let me know if there's anything you want to see or say so we have laura underscore sd24 who says i love embroidering i totally forget about everything while i'm doing it it's so relaxing i absolutely agree embroidery may be my job but it is also my guilty pleasure and like my go-to comfort thing to do on a weekend or an evening um when I just want kind of some me time. And I also love, as much as like, obviously I'm talking to you guys um, in a nice quiet room so that I can hear you instead. I also find that I love with embroidery that you can kind of, you know, chat to people around you because it's a different bit of your brain. So it just allows you to, you know, yeah, be able to have that bit of chat and quite a social element it's the old stitching circles thing which I really love now I'm just going to flick this over so that I can finish off my stitching and I'm just going to do that by weaving the thread can you see that yeah just about uh, in and underneath the existing stitches I don't want to do stab stitches to finish this because I don't want any additional stitching on the surface so I'm just going to weave them in underneath there like so and then snip to finish. I can see Mary Vesterman agreeing with the, the hands up to uh, Laura SD24 and Auntie Cooks says, thank you so much for these live stitch alongs. So inspirational. That's so sweet. Thank you for um, joining us, number one, and saying that to me. It really does make a difference um, with, you know, like motivating yourself to do these things and putting yourself out there and all that sort of thing. Um, anyone who knows me personally will know that the kind of uh, presentation type things are not really my bag. Uh, as a personality but I think it's important and what I do think is that I am passionate about sharing these skills and this information with you guys and that you know that is my motivation for doing things outside of my personal comfort zone. Fortunately embroidery is my comfort zone so it's a good sort of like middle ground. Right moving on to the passing thread so I've taken the yellow sewing thread again, but this time I'm, I've am popped a knot into the end and actually I'm going to pop that down onto the surface and do stab stitches to start. So we're going to be doing the passing thread the whole way around this outside eye area to look a little bit like, boom, yes. Look at the shine on that passing thread that isn't motivational enough I don't know what is so that's what we're aiming for today and we're going to start over in this corner here um, we are going to couch the passing thread the whole way around you'll notice if you can see can you can it focus on that that the stitches are bricked 
Oh yeah, there it goes. So they are bricked so that they're kind of in between the previous ones. And that just allows for a really nice, even, smooth, consistent finish. All of those, you know, uh, embroidery buzzwords that um, we are looking to achieve and work towards in our embroidery. Maybe I'll just pin that into place so you can see that. Now, this little sample here is actually one of our... Um, oh, it seems a bit wrong to pin it. Now it's a finished eye to pin it through the eyeball. That doesn't feel right, does it? Let's pin up here. Um, so... Yes, this is actually one of our other samples where we did add a few little extra um, bright check chipping areas. That is additional, but if you've already tried out some gold work and perhaps have some leftover materials, that is one of the ways you could perhaps make your surreal eye patch your own. Equally, if the blue isn't for you, you really only need a very small amount of stranded cotton in order to be able to uh, do the iris with its straight stitches. So, you know, change up the iris colour. Use a few colours, you know. Let your imagination run wild. Okay, so I've got my, my passing thread here. I'm just going to unravel that. Okie doke. You'll notice it feels quite different to sewing thread simply because it um, has, you know, quite so much metal in it, to be perfectly honest. And I'm actually just going to trim the end. So that we have a nice kind of sharp finish to that end as much as is possible. So for today, I am going to show you a method of starting and finishing, which means that you don't need to plunge through to the back, which you might prefer and is perfectly acceptable for this little project. There are instructions on how to plunge included in your kit. That is one of the um, postcards. That's the word I'm looking for that we have within the kit. So you can try the other method if you prefer, but I like to give you options. So you'll notice that with the nice sharp little end, I've just applied a couple of stitches to hold that into place. I'm gonna work from the outside edge inwards. Once you've got a couple in to hold it into place, you wanna come right down to the end and we're basically just going to place a few stitches directly onto the end of the passing thread to secure the whole of that end and basically just to stop it from fraying. Now this is where you might like that laying tool that I mentioned earlier to do the job of my nail. If you don't have a laying tool, you can of course use a nail like I just did. So the couching goes directly from one side of the passing thread with a stitch that is equal width to the passing thread itself and then straight back down on the other side so really simple in technique you want to add a fair few stitches to the end here because that's really just going to secure it all really beautifully and make sure that everything stays exactly as you intend it so this is where we might have the laying tool just to make sure that the stitch remains leaning up onto the thread itself and doesn't just flop down over the end like down this way you want it to go up and over the edge now if you give that a gentle little tug you'll feel that nothing moves and that's all we really want so now we can really lean into our couching try and keep your stitches of about equal width from one another again for a nice consistent finish but also it helps you with your bricking so whatever pattern you set up with this first line is what we're going to maintain as we work inwards you will notice i'm coming up on the outside edge 
of the eye and coming down on the inside. That's only going to be for this first pass of the eye's edge. When we move to the second layer within this first outside layer, what we're going to do is actually come up on the side that hasn't been embroidered yet. So that'll be the inside to make sure that we don't upset the embroidery that we've already done. I'll explain more about that in a second. So let's just work our way around and I will have another little look at the comments in a second. If you're wondering, I do read the comments out simply because we um, re-record all of these live stitch alongs and uh, put them together again as a separate full length video um, that goes onto our YouTube channel, as previously mentioned. Uh, that's a different playlist called Stitch Alongs, um, where you can see other projects that I've done a little live chat and a discussion of whilst stitching. Uh, and so you can watch the previous ones of those if you are particularly enjoying hearing me waffle on about embroidery things. There's lots of them on there. Um, we've got quite a selection of classes and kits now, um, which is, you know, really exciting, makes me really proud. Um, and I just like to talk about them, basically. So, uh, yeah, they're all there if you want them. But I read the comments out so that um, they remain there for posterity. And so if your comments lead me on to a bit of a tangent, which they so often do, as I just get, you know, caught up in myself and chatting away with whatever I'm thinking about off the back of what you guys have said, then um, it still makes sense for anyone watching in the future. Equally, you know, if you weren't able to stay for the whole stitch along, but you are interested in this, then you will have the opportunity to catch up with uh, the rest of the design. And for example, if I didn't manage to finish the whole design within the kind of hour that Instagram Live gives you, then obviously I will finish the design and that will be included in the YouTube stitch along recording so that you get the full overview and it's there just as a support reference should you be working on your own kit and come to something that you're not 100% sure about or would just like to see it in action. These kits have been designed with you taking a little bit of time away from screens, a bit of time for yourself to make something pretty um, and so that's why we have our postcard instructions there for you for these. And they're, they're pretty simple on that front. And so if you want more support than the paper copy gives you, YouTube is the place for you to find that further support. Equally, we are always on the email there to answer your questions. If you want to pop us an email with any questions that you might have, uh, whilst you're working on your kit, if you want some support, or you can message us on Instagram. Um, again, that's usually me picking those up. Then, you know, there's a few different methods for you to get in touch. Because the last thing we would want is for you to be stuck. We cannot allow that. Right, just coming round to the first pass of the eye. Have a sip of tea. Okie doke. So I'm going to come in really close into this corner to make sure that it's um, looking nice and continuous as we come round the inside of this eye. And now we'll pass inside of the previous layer to continue spiraling inwards. And if you need to make a sharper bend, you can bend the passing thread back on itself. You wanna press it quite hard because you do actually want to, not split it, but you do wanna bend it. You wanna bend the metal core, 
because that's what will give you a sharper corner, a bit like so. And then we can continue working on and upwards. This is also where you might like to come in with your laying tool because it allows you to really sort of just press in where your fingers might be too big or not, you know, dexterous enough to get that kind of um, pressure and detail and general finish. And you'll notice this first stitch that I'm going to do, I'm now coming up inside of the eye with space for the passing thread. So I now want the passing thread to be above my needle and then come down, pulling that passing thread in nice and secure. So we are up on the inside and down by the passing thread, holding that into place. I am now bricking the stitches to the previous pass of passing thread. And by going down on the side that is already embroidered, you can really control and make sure that you don't accidentally hit off the passing thread you've already laid and damaged it. If you were to damage your passing thread, you would need to remove the whole piece really, or to a point where you could subtly finish off your thread and start a new bit um, to replace the damaged area. Once it's damaged, you really can't do anything to repair it per se. Um, it's just a case of replacing it. I need a new thread. As you can see, this has got very short. So I'm just gonna snip that off. I did just some stab stitches to finish in an area that's going to be embroidered. So we know we're not going to uh, see that in the end. Take a fresh piece of thread, approximately fingertip to elbow in length. That is a good length to work with because it allows you to have really good control of your embroidery thread at all times. It means you don't have to bring your shoulder into play as you're stitching. And that might seem a funny thing to say, but it sort of means that you don't have to stress unnecessary parts of your body. And this really plays into kind of our pro tips side of things. Uh, thinking about embroidering in such a way that it allows for the most enjoyment. And I only say that in that I want you to think about making sure that you're setting yourself up with good habits so that you can, yeah, really lean into your embroidery. I'd like you to try and embroider in such a way that, you know, you're making sure you're sitting in a good position, you've got good light, you're doing the right things for your body to make sure that you don't have to stop because you know, you've made your shoulders sore or your back's aching or something like that. Stop because you've had enough, not because you felt you had to. And if we can increase the time that you can do that until that happens, then um, with good habits, I think that's very worthwhile. Therefore, a fingertip to elbow length piece of thread is the ideal to work with because then you're just passing the thread between the hands and the wrists and elbows are working quite hard. But uh, yeah, the shoulder doesn't have to come into play. Also, it means that you're never working with the same thread for too long. Now, particularly when we're working with stranded embroidery cotton like we did for the iris, you want to make sure that the embroidery thread that you're working with isn't too long, simply because every time it passes through the fabric, and especially when we're working with gold work, the amount of pressure and tension and resistance that that thread comes up against passing through the fabric is quite a lot. And you'll find that if you work with a really long piece particularly, as I say, of stranded cotton, it gets sort of fluffy towards the end. And so that's another little tip from us there that you don't want it to be too long and get too fluffy because then some parts of your embroidery will be very tightly twisted where the embroidery thread was fresh and other bits will be quite worn and fluffy 
and therefore the overall look of your embroidery would be inconsistent and well you know me love the consistency for all of us there with our embroidery i think i need to tighten my hoop a little bit we're getting a bit loose there so yeah, multiple reasons why fingertip to elbow length embroidery thread is the one. I told you about 10 minutes ago I was going to check the comments, didn't I? I didn't do that. I'm sorry. Let me do that now. Um, so let's have a little look. Uh, Marie Visman. I hope I'm saying your name right. I'm really sorry if I'm not. Um says i enjoy seeing you embroidering and also the way you talk to the audience thank you very much that's really kind i do really appreciate that um we also have deep violet clouds saying i've not done any gold work done a bit of embroidery and find it fascinating watching you and getting hints on making it look more professional wonderful i'm glad that's what you're taking from this today and um, yeah, I hope to see you at future stitch alongs. It's funny because I get to know you guys, I feel quite well by doing these stitch alongs and chatting to you and uh, just, yeah, taking a feel for how the community is doing at any particular time. I get to recognize certain um, usernames. And so every time I see a new person commenting, that's really exciting too, that you've sort of felt that you could chat to me um and yeah that hopefully you're enjoying it which um is what it's all about we're here to enjoy ourselves because at the end of the day it's only embroidery it's nothing serious and we're all here to have fun so still working my way around still bricking still just trying to keep those stitches nice and tight and small. I am having some issues with my embroidery hoop. Fortunately, the patches are quite firm, so I'm not worried about uh, bunching up the fabric or anything like that. But that is a factor that we would think about if we were working on something a little bit more um, more dense. Like if we were silk shading, then it, that would be a big problem. Fortunately, we're not. As I mentioned, if a uh, stitch along is not complete, like the whole project isn't completed in the stitch along, I will finish it and share it with you on the YouTube re-release of this video. That does look like it's going to be the case for this particular kit. I would say it'll probably take you maybe two and a half to three and a half hours to do this kit I think that's sort of reasonable obviously if you were doing this you probably wouldn't be gossiping away quite as much as I am um, so that will speed you up a little bit on what I'm doing uh, nor would you need to you know talk through what's in the kit you might like to you might like to pretend that you're hosting your own embroidery uh, you know like tv show uh, whilst you're doing it I am not here to judge and actually I would love to see that if that's what you were doing with this kit and just uh, enjoying yourself on that front. Um, but as I say, I'll finish it and include that uh, in the full length video as there's a fair bit of couching still to do. When it comes to finishing off, we will do exactly the same to the final end of the passing as we did at the beginning. So a series of tight stitches to cover over the end. Or if you want to try plunging, you can do that too. Once again, if you need more help with the plunging, then we have a pro tip on that too. So you can check that out, as well as the written instructions that, of course, come in your kit. So 
So I've got about 20 minutes to go before they cut me off. We'll see how far we can get. Alongside this new project that we released la no, not last week, week before, we also, this Friday, have a new spring-based design coming. And that uh, is going to be yeah, released on Friday, unless you're part of our mailing list, where you will have early access to that product and all of the others, or on the Facebook group. Um, yeah, they will all have early access from Thursday. So you might have seen on our Instagram um, that I've been hinting at that new PDF coming later this week. It's based around another Christmas product that we did that, again, went so well. We were so delighted with how you guys took to the idea that we've decided to do another one, but not so festive. So it's very much spring themed. It counts you down to Easter. So it's got a lot more designs in it uh, because it covers the days of Lent. And so, you know, there's 40 something days worth of stitching to do versus the 24 that we included in the uh, Advent version. It makes you another bauble, but this time the bauble is egg shaped. And um, yeah, it's all little rabbits and uh, there's some daffodils on there, there's eggs, there's uh, lambs, there's a few birds, lots, lots of flowers and plants. Um, it's super cute. I feel like it channels my inner Beatrix Potter dreams. Um, here we go. This is the one that we did. I'm sure you've seen some photos of this already. It's just so damn cute. I love it. Um, my God, look at this guy. So, yeah, this comes out later this week based off of the A Tree A Day bauble that we did at Christmas. Um, so you can make one of those. It is a PDF design. So you do not need to wait for any postage. If you are, particularly if you're international, uh, it's a great one because it will just get sent directly to your email address. We give you some guidance in there on um, choosing your base fabric. But the idea is that you can use up things you already have. And I think most of you are probably a little bit like me and that you stash away all these craft goodies thinking, oh, that's a nice bit of fabric. I'll keep that. And then you have a huge hoard of wonderful craft materials, but we've got to use them. And so this is the sort of project that you can put them to excellent use. And then it can go on to an Easter tree. If you do an Easter tree, I know some people do, or just, you know, like an Easter display, um, or just because it's a fun, nice thing to do. And it isn't necessarily about Easter. It's just sort of a celebration of spring. Um, so I would encourage you to do something along those lines. You can use it for um, stitching a little bit each day. That was one of our suggestions for embroidery themed New Year's resolutions. I wonder if any of you have been trying that this year and if you've stuck to it. Now we are into February. This year is going so fast. I don't know about you, but... It's just whipping by and keeping me on my toes, but also the speed at which it is going is slightly horrifying. Um, I'm not ready for it to be February already. I've got so many things I want to do and achieve this year that I, I need the time to slow down a little bit. Namely, We've got a lot of really fun products coming for this year. I've got big, big plans for the London Embroidery School. What we want to talk about and release to you guys. So I think how many, maybe four or five projects on the go at the moment. All of which I think are just are lovely. I know I'm terribly biased because I love all things embroidery, but... 
I think they're really fun and hopefully you guys will be kindred spirits to my excitement on that front. So I've just had the go ahead for working on a new like big class, multiple class class, if that makes sense. So it comes with a kit and it would be multiple videos to go alongside that, which is all about knotted stitches. So it's going to include French knots, colonial knots, um, bullion knots, knotted running stitch or coral stitch, um, pistol stitch, lots of really good fun things, building lots and lots of texture. But most people just think of French knots and perhaps bullion knots um, when they think about knotted stitches. But there is, in fact, quite a few different types of detached knots that you can make. And that's what this class really explores. They all have slightly different um, finishes to them and can be used for slightly different purposes. And you might find a new one that you don't already know about that perhaps uh, scratches your not making itch in a slightly different way. I really am a fan of French knots, but often find that my thread gets really quite twisty when I'm doing it because you're always wrapping in one direction. And so actually some of the other knots that we will be introducing you to don't twist in the same fashion. Um, there are yeah, two other types of knots that make a knot very similar to a French knot, but not quite the same. And so um, the colonial knots that we include make for a little bit more of a balanced knot than a French knot because you make a figure of eight. So you rather than twisting it twice in the same direction, you twist it once forwards and once backwards to make like a figure of eight. And so the thread is therefore more balanced every time which means that, uh, yeah, it doesn't get quite as twisted as with a French knot. Equally, there is also uh, Chinese knots, and they you twist the thread separately, but not around the needle. And so that really helps to make more of a, a three-way twist rather than a wrap to make the knot. Now, I'm sure that won't make too much sense talking about it like that, but all I can tell you is it's good. It's good stuff, and it is exciting. So... I will get cracking working on that um, and hope to share it with you later this year. If you enjoy the more kind of meditative aspects of hand embroidery, we're also working on another little class that will be taking a bit more of a yeah, mindfulness meditative approach to embroidery a bit of a slower pace and so that might be right up your street more details of that to come in the future and as i say earlier we have the rest of the art collection patches to come later in the year too they're going to make such a sweet set I think once you've done one, you'll, um, you'll be hooked. Right, let me have another quick look at the messages because I definitely saw at least one come in. I've got uh, Laura underscore SD24. I'm watching you embroider right now, although I'm in Mexico City. Hello from the other side of the pond. My goodness, and it's 5.30 a.m. I should be sleeping. Wow, okay, um... You probably should be sleeping, but I, I hope that this is worth the potential impending tiredness. Um, thank you for joining me from all the way over there. That's really cool. Um, it's so interesting where everybody is from and how I think we find each other on platforms like this. So I guess it's the power of social media for all of its uh, faults and problems. It also does do some great things. So, um, yeah, amazing to have you join us. And yeah, I guess you are one of our internationals who might benefit from some of our either yeah, PDF type products or our um, yeah free content products that are there on our YouTube channel or the PDFs because they are 
just PDFs and you don't have to wait or pay for international postage or anything like that. And we've had obviously so many problems, so many people have with international postage this year um, with the whole Royal Mail cyber attacks thing and they shut basically just shut it all down. Um, yeah, not ideal and very difficult for small businesses. And we are so glad that that's sorted and we're able to serve you guys again um, if you're not based in the UK because we don't want to limit who we can share wonderful embroidery things with based on your proximity to us. Just because we're in London doesn't mean you need to be in London. Right, still working inwards. If you find that the passing thread isn't sitting quite as um, kind of tightly into corners as you'd wish, then just make sure to add a few extra stitches to control that into place. And don't be afraid, particularly in the corners, to come in with that laying tool of choice to just ease it out. Make sure your corners are sharp. And that the piece is doing your embroidery skills justice. So down we go. I particularly like these patch kits for introducing people to new materials, uh, particularly with gold work. It can be a little bit daunting is often what I think people feel when they are looking at and thinking about gold work. And so if you just want to try out a technique, then these are a really good way of just dipping your toe into gold work, testing if it is for you or, you know, if it's if it's not, who knows, but you won't know until you try. And so this just allows you to try one of the kind of traditional gold work finishes and materials. Give it a go. Hopefully in a way that you end up with a thing that you can use and also enjoy at the end. I should mention gold work is not washable. So I would suggest if you wanted to put this onto garments that you would usually launder perhaps pop it onto a couple of um pins you know like uh, brooch pins so that you can remove it again when you need to launder the item uh, because it is metal it it does not wash do not try so that is kind of one of the reasons that it's sort of associated with being expensive and luxurious and all of that sort of thing not the the anti-laundering thing but the aspect of it that it is you know to be worn for the best of occasions you know it's your your best items historically that's why we see it so much in paintings of royalty and the rich basically what it was communicating and it still has those kind of undertones which I think is what gives it that really luxurious feel and I mean when you can get that high shine a finish of course it's going to feel luxurious so this is just a little taste of that luxury that you can add to your own items so therefore things like uh, popping it onto a bag or um, yeah, a phone case. If you get a clear phone case, these sit really nicely into the back of that. Then you can change them out. They're like embroidered stickers almost, you know? Um, there's some really good uses of this particular patch. In my mind, people will have them on like rucksacks, like uh, travel badges or yeah. That's, how, that's kind of how we saw them being used, but you can really make a feature of them when it's so eye-catching in itself. 
it's um it will lift any item you pop it onto so back into this corner again i'm going to start adding a few extra stitches just to make sure this corner sh stays sharp and particularly as we get in towards the corner points and the corner becomes sharper as we go inwards we need to make sure that it remains true to the outside shape so pressing it hard back on itself here and flicking the thread upwards perhaps another little stitch just to balance the other side so coming up on the inside remember going down on the outside of the thread I don't know whether I said earlier and you can probably see anyways but we're using a single thread when we couch gold work materials because we want the stitches to be as thin and subtle and disappear into the embroidery as much as is possible for other gold work techniques if it passes through cut work for example we use a double thread to give the heavy metal that we are applying as much support as is possible because for other te gold work techniques it really needs that extra support that's important but for couching it is just about placing it carefully and making sure it all stays in a beautiful place but in a very subtle quiet fashion I don't know whether you can hear the embroidery thread passing through the fabric it's one of my favorite sounds just really pleases me to hear it and I find it really relaxing that little thrum Right, I am going to leave that here for today. As I say, I will finish it off and the final piece will be in the main, well, the full video, which will go onto YouTube shortly, as soon as I have edited it. Um, otherwise, thank you so much to all of those who joined me today. And it's been wonderful to have you all and chat away. Um, as I say, think about joining the mailing list if you want early access to our new products. And this one is already live on our website. Link in the bio if you want to have a go at it yourself. Otherwise, I've had a lovely time. Uh, have fun. Keep making beautiful things. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.